Welcome back, pet parents. I'm so excited for today's guest because I've gotten to know her and she's a friend of mine, but she also has so much valuable information that she is so willing to share with pet parents just like you. Her name is Bronwyn Farley and she is the owner of Dulce's Legacy. And yes, I said Dulce. <laughs> And not Dolce. We had this conversation, but I want to make sure you say it right, too. So it's Dulce, Dulce's legacy. And she is what well, you're a holistic canine nutritionist. Sure. And that's a distinction. Yes. Um, and you specialize currently in helping hospice and cancer dogs, which is so special. It's I mean, like we've talked about it. Like, I don't know sometimes I don't know how you do it because it just would hurt my heart so bad but then I actually just got a client with malignant melanoma and so I'm like ah I'm getting attached already <laughs> right so I get it I understand why you do it but um today we're going to talk a little bit about you and what you do and just kind of spreading knowledge and information about what you do so people know and understand that there are support systems out there a lot of times people can feel really alone because their veterinarian is in and out, in, right. you know, five minute intervals. And they're like, ah, what do I do when they're, when they go home with a diagnosis like this? And um, we are also going to talk about something that is really, really like passionate for both of us, which is the topic of synthetic ingredients. So thank you so much for being here, Bronwyn. Um, would you start by just telling us a little bit about you and your journey and how you got to where you are? Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. So, um, yes, uh, when I first started, uh, my mentor is actually from the UK and, um, like everyone else, I was doing everything wrong with Dulce. Like, you know, I, I, he was on three different kibbles because I was trying to find the glucosamine and chondroitin for his age. And then we had a prescription diet that, um, or prescription kibble, which we know has zero medications in it for a sensitive stomach. And, um, of course he was vaccinated and the flea and tick medications, which are not medications. Those are pesticides. We need to call them exactly what they are. Um, and I was doing everything wrong. Um, I then switched him to a basic PMR diet, which is just, um, PMR is, is Frankenstein together of, of just meats that that's it. You, you've got your organ, your bone and your muscle meat and, um, all of his inflammation, sensitive stomach issues that it all went away. Um, he was diagnosed with a condition called LARPAR. That's where, um, the flap that's in the back of their throat, um, it can seize open or it can see shut. His would see shut and he would literally suffocate in, in my lap and defecate and urinate. I mean, and I would just have to sit there and talk to him. And that's when I got into, um, you know, as far as inflammation, that's what made me, made me decide to change him over to a raw diet. And we went from six episodes in a week to one in six months. And so, um, and that was just switching all him off of all of the kibbles, all of the, the vaccinations, all, everything and detoxing his system. Um, I, I want to, to note that when I got violently shoved into this holistic world, so to speak, I didn't know what the word homeopathy meant. I didn't know, you know, I knew what herbalism was. I knew what herbs were, but I didn't know that this whole other world existed. One of the major things that I hear clients say to me is, God, I really wished I would have found you before. And that breaks my heart. But at the same time, and I don't remember who originally coined this term, but stating that, you know, when we know better, we do better. We were all there. We were all there at the very beginning. It's not just you. So that that's really important to understand. It, it's when you know better and you choose not to do anything about it. So, um, then Dulcie was diagnosed with cancer. I didn't know anything about canine cancers whatsoever. I was already doing my, my bachelor's in science for nutrition courses. Um, my mentor showed me that, Hey, by the way, they've got 
courses they've got they've got college over there in the uk it's college we go to college <laughs> but um i was already doing you know just basic nutrition information and i obviously wasn't going to sit around you know with what time i had left because we were given a very short time span with dulcie again would i do things differently absolutely you know now that i i know what i do with my clients um, we were given two weeks and we got three with him and it, it just all happened so quickly. And I literally just drowned myself in everything holistic for dogs. And, and that's, that was my beginning to all of this. Um, I was working with a rescue in the Northeast and I ended up with a couple of cancer dogs and it just became my life mission. Basically. I lived, eat, ate, and, and breathed, you know, cancer in, in hospice. I wanted a support system that was not only going to support my dogs that came to me as clients, but their families also, because it gets really dark and lonely at 2 a.m. And that mom or that dad needs somebody to talk to, because if you bottle up all that stress inside, you're going to your dogs are going to know that they're, they're going to feel that. And so I can't tell you how many phone calls I get at two o'clock in the morning. I get up, I make myself a cup of tea. I go into the bathroom so I don't disturb the rest of the house. And, and that mom cries it out and I cry and, and we put ourselves back together and then she can go back the next day. And her dog doesn't know that that anxiety has been there, but that at least gives them someone to step away and let them let all those emotions out. And then we can put ourselves back together and do what we need to do. Pretty, I mean, on, just just that alone is pretty extraordinary in, in my eyes. Because, you know, of course you're talking about cancer right now. And that's the big, oh my gosh, we never want this to happen. But the, mm -hmm. the truth is there are so many things that can happen that, may not be as severe as significant as cancer that we still feel alone uh you know like as you're you were talking about all of this i'm thinking back on some of these things that have happened between me and my pets throughout their lives that i would say definitely isn't as significant as cancer but still i'm alone on the floor crying with nobody to talk to about it Mm -hmm. you know, so just having that kind of support and then the added benefit of all of the knowledge and information that you've gained in helping so many dogs with so many different disorders. But I know you now start, you know, really heavily focused on cancer and hospice uh, dogs. It's, it's, it's something the world needs more of. Um, Especially because we know you're just one person. You can't take a whole world on your shoulders, even though I know you try. <laughs> I know you try. And, and here's the thing, you know, it's not something that I'm into. It's not something that, you know, it's not a hobby of mine. Um, I might get emotional. <laughs> My hospice and cancer babies mean the world to me. You know, they are my heart and soul. <clears throat> and, and, you know, those cases that you were talking about that may not be cancer, there's something else going on. You know, that's the reason why I, I built my programs the way that I did. I have a puppy program. It's 16 weeks and I'm still available to, to that client 24 seven within reason. Do I want to talk about garlic and, and fleas and ticks at 10 o'clock at night? No, I, I don't. But if that little girl spikes a fever at 2 a.m., guess who you get to call? Me. Because you're not going to be able to call your vet at 2 o'clock in the morning and have someone walk them through. I'm not saying that I take a, D a DBM's place by any means because I don't. There are, you can ask any one of my clients. I'm like, okay, we're loading up. It's time to go. <laughs> you know, if this is, you know, I need a vet's eyes on this. I need a, somebody that is, knows what they're doing to physically be able to put their hands on your dog at this point. And so, but I wanted a support system because I was, I was all alone with Dulcie and I wasn't going to spend what time I had. 
on Facebook, researching and things like that. I want to take away the fact that you are a cancer dog, mom or dad, and I want you to be present and in the moment and just become a dog mom again. You know, I told someone the other day, okay, what does he like to do? He likes to go for a walk and and go around to the, the lake. Okay. Tomorrow, I want you to go and sit there. I want you to go take him and I want you to just sit there, turn your dang phone off and just sit and be, be in the moment. Look at the grass, look at how he's enjoying it, you know, just be in the moment. And that is so very important because as dog, cancer dog moms and dads, we get so wrapped up and, and then there's life. We still have to deal with life on top of it. You know, there's work, there's kids, there, there's this, there's, you know, everybody needs and, and they're just all taking, taking, taking. I want you to stop and just be in the moment. That is one of the most important things that we can do. I was lucky enough that those last three weeks, um, I, I got to be at home and let me tell you what I absorbed every single second, like, and I photographed all of it cause I wasn't going to forget any of it. Mm. That that's, that's the whole point around Dulcie's legacy is I wanted a support system. I wanted something that gave people a foundation and a support system and Dulcie's legacy on Facebook. Many of the the people that are there, they've either all been in those shoes or they're now there now. And so when someone new, when I introduce someone new, all of my regulars, they just flock to them and they, they make sure that they understand that they're not alone in this. And that is so, that is beyond Dulcie's Facebook page. Literally the other day has been up for two. No, I'm sorry. March 28th. It'll be up for two years because I naively thought that I didn't need a website page. I didn't need a Facebook page. I could do this all by word of mouth. <laughs> yeah. And so I finally started, you know, I did my website page. Um, that was a year old last week. And then I did my Facebook page and that will be two years on March 28th. Yeah. And it's the community that you've created. And I've witnessed just a little bit of it because I happen to know, I think one person (laughs) that has been in your program and it is really, it's really something, um, to be able to create community like that um but i think also you've been able to create that community because it doesn't have anything to do with you it has everything to do with them and people feel Mm -hmm. that i I would have to agree yeah it's i I wanted something like i said it is just i did i wanted to set the world on fire i was so angry when he was diagnosed and i was so by myself. I mean, yes, my husband was there and he was just as, as affected as I was, you know, it was just Dulcie and I for years. And then, you know, it, my husband came along and we were the three musketeers and he he didn't even want a dog. He was like, my heart is going to get broken. Now, you know, we have Nucky and Nucky is his heart dog and he's never had a heart dog. (laughs) And so that this, that that's his guy, you know, And so, um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted people to stop and just, you know, stop researching, stop doing this, stop doing that. It's okay to breathe. Take, take time to be in the moment because we may not have that later on. Absolutely. Um, so not to continue with this, like, whole like it's heavy. Right. And, and we know it's heavy, like we know coming into it, it's it's just a heavy topic. Um, so I do want to try to transition out of the heaviness, but before we do that, um, what tips would you have for someone first getting a cancer diagnosis or any heavy diagnosis really from your veterinarian Mm -hmm. about an animal that you have? Like what do you want the first things for a pet parent in that situation to do? So um, I recently, because it was just my cancer program, just my cancer program, you know, I didn't have a name for it or anything. I, I had a colleague ask me because I was going to change the name. She goes, well, what do you call it now? I said, the cancer program. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
very simple with things. <laughs> and so, uh, but I had a, a woman come to me. Um, her name is Christine and, or Christina, and she's in California. Um, she came to me with a dilated cardiomyopathy dog. Her appointment was supposed to be on Thursday. I bumped my, my special clients up. If there, if it's, you know, one of these standards, like, um, uh, neurological cancer, uh, you're not waiting for an appointment. We're going to get you in as soon as possible. So, um, she took her appointment on Thursday. I bumped her up to, I think that Tuesday. And, um, sadly we lost her to, um, a heart attack. And so if I had not bumped her up, we wouldn't have gotten to do that. <clears throat> when I do lose a client so quickly like that, I stay with the family after, and we begin again for six more weeks after, you know, that way I have a, a chance to teach them a few different things. Ironically, as fate would have it, her second dog was diagnosed with mast cell tumor. <clears throat> oh my gracious. How, like how unfair is that, you know? Um, and she's gone into remission. Mm -hmm. And so that's just one of those things, you know, yes, we lost this one. But maybe that was because that was putting me in place for this one. Right. Maybe that's the whole point to it. So we do have to see some type of, and, and trust me, I'll be the first one to, to say, you know, if you would have told me years ago that I had to lose Dulcie to have a name and, and do these things in his name, I would have told you to kick rocks in a heartbeat. Yes, absolutely. No. <laughs> I would much rather keep him. Thank you very much. <laughs> but. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, and a lot of people that they, they do, they come to me and I would really like to get into cancer dogs, or I'd like to lean into this, or I would like to, this is not something I lean into. This is my passion. You know, my husband has November, I lost my voice and, you know, couldn't make, because I make arrangements for, for some of my clients that need me to, you guys shouldn't have to do that. That's something I do for you. And so I didn't have a voice to make the arrangements. So my husband had to do it. And afterwards he fell apart. Good. You know, we have to take into consideration that I do this on a daily basis and I still get affected. There, there are clients that come and, and I get attached to. Um, I've been told that I'm inappropriate for getting so attached to my clients. If you're looking for someone that stays disconnected, I'm not the person that you want. I, I want to, to be right there with you. You hired me to do a job, allow me to be that, that person that you lean on. When we get those diagnoses and, and understand that, that I changed my program from the cancer dog program, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked to the unity program. And I did it because of Tallulah and Fiona. Okay. Because why do they not get the same? program that that's for the life of the dog, which is what my program is. You, you come, you do a consultation. If we, we mesh, it's one set fee for the duration of that dog's life. And that's 24 seven support. Um, but why doesn't a dilated cardiomyopathy dog get the same respect, a, a cancer treatment or time frame that a cancer dog would get? So I made it my unity program. And I love the name because it's unity as one. We will get this through this together as one. And so when you get that type of diagnosis, whether it be neurological procedures, whether it be um, cardiovascular or cancer, I have a lot of CKD dogs that are in that unity program as well. If it's going to end up in hospice, I put it into my unity program. If it's not something I can fix, but I can help you manage, we go into that unity program. When you get these diagnoses, we need to talk the very first thing because nutrition is going to be the foundation of everything that we do. We have to drop the, inf uh, the inflammation out of the body. We need to make sure that we are eating a species appropriate food. Yes, I'm a raw feeder. Yes, I love my raw feeding. Um, I, I'm perfectly fine with gently cooked uh, as well, you know, but making sure that our diet has no inflammatories and on top of that, making sure that those proteins synergistically and energetically work with that body. Because if you have a cancer dog with lumps and bumps, that's stagnant heat. Don't feed it a hot protein. 
right. don't feed it, you know, inflammatories like grains and starches and, and things like that. Um, and that's going to also lead us into synthetics, you know, dropping all of that inflammation. That's the very first thing you want to do, making sure that our diet is on point. Um, a lot of people get upset about peanut butter and sweet potatoes. Don't feed your cancer dog that. Even if it's one or two, it's one or two every single day that's going to build up over time. You know, some dogs don't have six months, much less a year. And that's a lot of sweet potatoes over a one year period. Make sure that you get with someone, if it's me or, or whomever, make sure that you get with someone that is going to tailor a diet to that specific dog, not Chloe's diet or, or, you know, mm -hmm. Cleo's diet or whoever that, that, that one Facebook page is it, it's, it, it's for the masses. We want a diet tailored specifically to Luna. We want a diet specifically tailored to Ellie or, or any one of my cancer dogs. They all have a very specific diet that energetically works for them only because it's made for them. Dropping inflammation is going to be the number one key that you do. The very first thing that you do when you get that diagnosis is you look at the inflammation that's in your dog's body, and the, especially if you're on a kibble diet. If you're on a kibble diet, that is all inflammation. And you have to understand that now you have to change. You have to change the diet to a whole fresh food diet. Yeah, that is absolutely the very first thing I think I can... I mean, obviously, you're the professional, but I completely agree. <laughs> I completely agree with you. Um, and there are so many commercial diets. Even if we remove all kibble from being an option, if we look at all of the other commercial diets that are still available, there are still quite a few that I think we'd say no to. Like, most of them still say no to. Yes. And <clears throat> one of those reasons is because of all of the synthetics that they use. And so I know, you know, there's there's a time and a place for everything. And I understand why synthetics are used in, you know, mass-produced pet foods. There are various reasons. And there are also, like, varying degrees. Like, there are foods out there that are going to throw some whole foods together, but None of that really matters because it's all being balanced to AFCO standards with what we like to, what I like to call a premix. Um, some people call it a vitamin pack or a vitamin and mineral pack mm -hmm. or whatever. It's, it's all the same thing. And then there are other foods out there that they do their best to balance with whole foods, but they need to like fill in gaps here and there. And the reality is that the preference is for no synthetics. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Um, and I'll be the first one to admit I'm notoriously cruel with companies and, and supplements and who I like and who I don't like. And I'm, I'm unapologetic about it. Um, I do not want to complete and balanced. I, I don't like how we've coined that term. I, I feel that that was notoriously recommended by kibble companies. And God forbid someone like me be able to come in and be able to formulate, you know, that, that that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Um, I want a diet that one is going to be specifically for that animal. And, and we all know that, that because I'm very public about it, um, no grains, legumes, lentils, starches. I don't want any of that. All of that breaks down into sugar. Sugar feeds inflammation, inflammation, cancer, and yeast. That's what sugar feeds. So we need to get rid of all of those. They're canines. They are supposed to eat a prey model species appropriate diet. Yes, they have vegetation. With all of that being said, when the body is introduced to a synthetic, if it is a super sensitive body, it throws a red flag that it, in various forms, whether it be a rash, vomiting, acid reflux, diarrhea. And until you remove that, then the inflammation's not going to get any better. Um, two months ago, I had this lovely couple come to me. His name was Judson, or is Judson. We almost lost him recently. And mom has decided that we're going to go with mistletoe therapy. He came to me and her email broke my heart because um, 
what was it that she said? You're our only hope. We've been to the emergency room like six times in the past two weeks at 4 a.m. It was acid reflux. That's all it was. And he was on a raw diet, but it was a pre-made with all the synthetics. I changed his proteins up and removed all the synthetics. Acid reflux went away. We now have found out that he does have a tumor within his brain, or we're suspecting it. Um, we're not going to put him through all the, the tests or anything like that. Um, one of our other vets that are here on the island that I work closely with has found it. So um, we're going to be putting him with with a mistletoe therapy, and but he's he's doing good up until that point with the acid reflux. That that's literally all it was was the synthetics. And the body saying, there's a foreign object in me. I need to get it out. And so, yeah, since no synthetics, especially if you have a sensitive dog, that means neurological, that means CKD, that means any type of health condition, lupus, any of those, you cannot do synthetics. And when we say synthetics, I, it, like it's easy to say, oh, anything you can't pronounce on the label, but it's really not quite that simple. I, no, I, I pulled up a post that you recently reshared, which is incredibly long and very detailed. And so I certainly don't want you to like reiterate this whole thing. I can send people to, <laughs> I can put it in the show notes, a link to your Facebook page where you have this post. Um, but there are a couple of things in there that you do talk about, like you do highlight. Um, one being excipients. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> I'm going to have to pull this up. Hold on. Um, I have it pulled you up. You got to remember, I wrote that last year. Yeah. Or I put that together so, last year. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it says, excipients are chemicals added to your dog's supplements. Many are toxic and foreign to your dog's body with unpredictable health risks. Um, and then you have just a list of excipients because there are some food-based excipients as well um like cellulose and rice powders um uh so harmful excipients to avoid fillers cornstarch lactose cellulose sorbitol calcium phosphate um so there are things that we can pronounce <laughs> that we may not actually want to see in the food fillers binders lubricants sweeteners flavoring coloring agents the list goes on and you don't need to you know say word for word your post i'm sure you know you're passionate enough to just have have your spiel ready <laughs> so cellulose cellulose is what sawdust sawdust yeah yeah it, it, it's a wood filler why would we um, no. And, you know, as far as like mushrooms, where we grow, where, how we harvest mushrooms. Okay. A lot of times on companies, you'll see rice bran, uh, myceliated rice bran flour. Okay. Mm -hmm. This means that the mushrooms have been grown on a rice cake inside of a bag. All right. I, I grow mushrooms here and, or let me rephrase that. My husband grows mushrooms here. Um, and yes, some of them are rice based. These are not for my dogs. All right. Um, those rice based, when you pull the mushroom off of the mycelium, mycelium is basically the, the, the root base, if you will. Um, Angela's probably going to, to fuss at me because I'm butchering the terminology, but it, it's the, it's the root system it, 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 for all intents purposes. Um, when you pull that off, that grain is going to be stuck to it. And then they put it all into a blender. And so there's no way that you can separate that from the mycelium. So most places, when you harvest it, you're going to pull the mushroom off and you're not going to get the mycelium that, that comes with it. When you grow on, on a grain substrate, when you have to worry about second generation allergies, because if we're not supposed to have, or if Prime example, Ellie or Luna is, is super sensitive to grains. Okay. Um, if I were to grow mushrooms on a grain substrate, then that second generation of, of grain is going to come through that mushroom and she is going to have an allergic reaction to it. 
much like if we fed grain to a cow and that cow was slaughtered and then we fed that beef to a dog that is specific, you know, very, that second generation allergy is going to come through. Mm -hmm. When it comes to synthetics, be very aware of, of what the labels say, cellulose. And, and there's one that starts with M I can never pronounce, um, citric acid. You'll love this because I haven't posted this one yet. Citric acid is a big one, right? Yes. Yes. Um, it is a derivative. So I learned this from monkey's house to, to go down this monkey hole. So citric acid is also in Benadryl. Okay. We love Benadryl for our mast cell tumor dogs, right? No, don't do that. Um, citric acid is a derivative of chicken bones. That's the way it used to be. Now it's made from black mold. Yeah. That so your little not... energy drinks that have citric acid in it, you know, all of those things that, that that's a derivative made of a, um, human made black mold. Well, that doesn't sound safe at all. <laughs> like we don't no. want it. I mean, we know, no. we know that's not safe for us or any of us. Correct. But it's in everything. If you look at your cereal boxes, if you look at, you know, I've become, and my husband is even, he's like looking at the pack, tapioca. Tapioca is starch. Again, we don't want to feed that. Mm -hmm. So even though it's in the gelatin capsule, even though, because we don't know, it's called pixie dusting. We don't know exactly how much are, are, is going into to that tub of mushrooms that, that's powdered. Real mushrooms, granted, they, they don't have any fillers, which I applaud them for that. Other companies do. You'll see cellulose or you'll see myceliated uh, rice bran flour. Um, you'll see all of these other names. It's pixie dusted. You, you don't have to, the FDA doesn't control how much you put into it. So in other words, it could be half filler and then half mushrooms. If I'm dealing with a cancer dog, I want all mushrooms and I want my clients to pay for what they're getting, for, you know, getting. And that's another reason why I'm so notoriously cruel on companies. I want my clients to spend the amount of money that they're going to need to spend on something that one works and two is clean mm -hmm. because I want to control the narrative of what goes into that animal's body as much as possible. Right. And you are mentioning the like correlating, showing the correlation between, you know, mushrooms being grown on say rice or even oats. Which, mm -hmm. you know, I think some companies will also do because of it'll increase the beta glucan, beta, beta glucan levels from the oat coming, you know, being growing it so, is what I understand. And we'll have to, to Angela will have to to yeah. comment on this. But, so her tinctures, her tinctures have fifty four percent beta glucans. Hers are wild harvested, right? So they're not grown on any grains, right? So how is she one of the leading to have 54% beta glucans? So no, you can do it without growing yeah. an, on an, a grain substrate. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, so you are correlating that with, say, a, a cow being fed mm -hmm. grain. Um, and, and so that kind of brings up another point of sourcing and knowing where the ingredients are coming from in any food that you feed because we would preferably this is where a lot of I know my clients get kind of stuck with me I'm like please 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 feed grass-fed and finished beef <laughs> like you know if you're making your own and um mm -hmm. and, and it, it, it can be a sticking point for some pet parents because it is more expensive to buy you know grass-fed and grass and it can be difficult for people to find grass-fed and grass -fed. absolutely beef but um to your point it's that that second generation and if we have all of these sensitivities to grains or even full-blown allergies like like your dog does then it's we're still perpetuating this cycle absolutely and i had a client come to me she was diy 
Like she did it all herself. She was doing it and she couldn't figure out. And this American bully, his chest, like it was red and swollen and, and lifted. Like the skin was so inflamed. And I asked her, I said, okay, where are you shopping from? And it was Walmart and Piggly Wiggly and, and these other companies. We switched mm-hmm. them over to, you know, reputable resources. No issues whatsoever. Yeah. So it matters. It always matters on where we resource from and, and what's in it. You know, we have to go, it, it's almost like playing chess, if you will. You have to look at the two steps behind, so to speak, of, of how we got to here. Mm-hmm. Where was this meat resourced from? Where, what was it fed? Yeah. Our and mushrooms. What, was- what were they grown on? Yeah. And, and yeah. that's so important um for people to understand like why why people like you are so picky about these things and it's not really even like I mean I hate to say it that way but that's how you know people see it like oh you're you're just so picky and oh my gosh I feed my dog better than I feed myself and I just I'm perfectly fine with being cruel and very picky about (laughs) companies we need better standards as far as I'm concerned well and I think it kind of come comes down to the fact that we have been so marketed to and so lied to for so long that we feed ourselves so poorly that we just don't even like when when it comes to being put in a position where your dog is so sick that you have to face these harsh realities it's this like affront to everything we're even doing for ourselves because Mm -hmm. we just didn't know better and that's I truly believe like not our fault if we have for so many generations now been lied to and marketed to and manipulated and it it we feed ourselves so poorly that when we have to face facts that we need to feed actual real healthy food to our dogs that we're like wait what is happening right now (laughs) like what is happening to my world right now And I do. And I, I I apologize to my clients, you know, within that, once they've decided that, yes, they want to move forward and work with me, I explain to them, now, listen, I understand the next two weeks, it is going to feel like all I say is no. And I turn your world upside down. And I was like, and that is not my intention. I was like, after two weeks, you will be a pro at this. I promise. Because a lot of them are doing a DIY or a grind based. And and then we're coming in and, and adding our veggies and things like that. And I do say a no a lot, like, because we, we've all jumped on the supplement bandwagon and have a graveyard in, in our kitchen cabinet of supplements that didn't work or didn't do this or didn't do that. And, and now we're just throwing the kitchen sink at the dog. Yeah. Or, or, or the cat even, you know, less is going to be more, break it back to basics and then start gently. And just because it's a name brand that everybody loves doesn't always mean it's going to work for your dog. It's okay not to be married to a company. Right. Absolutely. Um, there was one other thing that really stood out and you just reminded me when you said that when we are talking about supplements, because I think I'm I'm very much like you in that let's pull everything back. We need to rebuild the foundation with food, with healthy, appropriate food for whatever's going on with your animal. And I'm really slow and reluctant to add supplements in. Um, and mm-hmm. one of the things that you talked about in this post that is going to be in the show notes so everybody can go and check it out is um, that you do prefer capsules over tablets in uh, in supplements. Correct. And um, I'm trying to find it in the post so I can I can ask you an educated question um, because of the coatings on the tablets, which is very interesting to me because I know again the marketing and the propaganda that we as humans have been given with 
you know, all these slow release tablets and they, the coding is going to, you know, you've got this active, it's going to start working really quick. And then you'll have this like slow, you know what I mean? Like we've just been marketed to so well for so many years Mm -hmm. that it's hard for us to, to backpedal and think, oh, wait, you mean coding's are silent? No, I, I, so out of the few capsules that I do use, I have my clients open it up and dump it in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, again, this post was shared last year. I've completely changed my, my habit on that as well. You know, um, and, and I changed my, my format in the way that I dealt with dogs. Um, Lisa came to me with, um, Carly and it was Dulcie's doppelganger. Like they could have been from the same litter. And so, yes, I was very attached. Um, she had, or she came with a lot of herbs and we had to do separate meals because a lot of herbs had to go into that. Over the the years, we are just powdering the crap out of our dogs. Okay. And I said this the other day, our dogs have four major requirements in life. Okay. That's their job, their breed, sex, sleep, and their food. And we are powdering the crap out of their food. Um, I now resource strictly from companies that predominantly do tinctures. One, it's going to absorb faster into the gum line. And if we can do it AM and PM away from our, our, our food, then especially for a cancer dog or a dog that's you know, headed towards hospice, they get to still enjoy the one thing that they love, which is food. Yes. That's such and, a and why huge take deal. that? If, if there's four things, okay, most of us have removed this, this, the sex issue. Okay. Um, the job, you know, how many working dogs do we really still have? You know, most of these are our couch potatoes and there's nothing wrong with that. I have three of them and I have bull, ter- you know, American pit bull terrier mixes, but there's their food is, is one of their major needs and wants in life. Why are we powdering the crap out of it? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if a tincture doesn't taste good, okay, pop it into their mouth, give them an extra special treat, tell them, thank you for it and leave their bowl alone. <laughs> yeah. You know, that way you're not chasing after this dog with this bottle and they're like, oh my God, this is going to taste like crap. No, give them something special. Give them a duck heart, give them some freeze dried, make it, you know, something that they love. I have a dog that refuses to eat and doesn't want to eat. And, and he runs from mom. I was like, okay, what is his favorite thing to do? Well, he likes to go for a walk. Okay. Do that to him and then immediately take him. So that way, every time he's associating, okay, you're going to do this to me, but I get this in return. Yeah, absolutely. But, and, and yeah, it, since that article, and I didn't mean to go off on it on, on a tangent, <laughs> But since that article, yes, I I predominantly use NHB now because they are an herbal company that um, is supported by veterinarians and it's, it's all organic and ethically resourced and it comes in a tincture and I absolutely love them. I am so glad you said that because that is such a huge pet peeve of mine also and something I have absolutely refused to do with my dog. I don't care how many companies just randomly send me stuff in the mail to try and, you know, it looks like a really good product, sourcing is good, but I'm not turning my dog's soul into mud, into paste. Like, I'm I'm just not going to do it. It's a mm-hmm. sticking point for me because she loves her food. And she has always loved her food. And just to kind of throw a little story in, my dog, I adopted her from a rescue who pulled dogs out of Mexico. And so she actually lived in Mexico. The people who originally owned her lived in Mexico and gave her up. And she was fostered in Mexico. And I'm not saying this to, like, make myself sound better or anything. This is just the reality of the story. And in fact, when I did adopt her, I actually had quite a few people um, message me because I had like a dog Facebook page at the time and they were mad at me 
like, do you know how many dogs in America need homes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this dog found me. You have no idea what I went through to find this dog, right? This dog found me, came to me for a reason. Um, But anyway, what we found out, I became pretty good friends with the um, founder of the rescue. And what we found out probably six, eight months later after I had adopted her was that the foster had, who, by the way, I had already, I already knew he had too many foster dogs, but I mean, that's kind of the reality of rescue, right? You always have too many dogs. Um, and the, what they found out was it was a man, a younger man in his twenties. Um, he was getting the food from the rescue and just because of how things are in Mexico, he was giving like just enough to the dogs for them to survive and selling the rest. And um of course they, you know, took all the dogs out of his care when they found out all the things, but that hurt my heart to know that my beautiful little princess was being basically starved, right? Like mm-hmm. she was already getting kibble first of all, which the day I adopted her that changed, but um that her food is I, probably more important to me than it is to her. <laughs> than it is to her. Hold on. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> Somebody <Buddy. laughs> else wants to talk. The <laughs> <A> kid. <laughs> oh my god! He said it, it's my time. He's photo bombed and video bombed like every single one of my podcasts. Like he just, he needs to be, it's, it's absurd. Anyways, no. And, and bless her heart. When they do, when, when they love their food so much, why are we just, you know, I call it molesting, uh, molesting the bowl. Stop, stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely refuse to do it. And um, so any supplements she gets, it's away from her, her regular meal. Or away from them. her goat's milk because she loves her goat's milk. I am not going to mess with that. That is like our special mm-hmm. morning routine. There is zero chance I'm going to change that for her. That's right. like, it's, it's bonding that we have with each other. I'm not going to mess that up. So yeah, I, I appreciate that you said that so, so much. <laughs> And, and so many people are like, wait, you, you want me to give this? Yes. Give it away from their food and, and do a little meatball, you know, take a little bit of their food, make a little meatball and, and give them, you know, now they feel extra special because they're getting something. They think that they're getting something special that they're not. It's still part of their food, but they, they don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I absolutely love that you, you do that away from their food. You know, and, and a lot of people can sit there and ding me for, okay, well, Bronwyn, you, you have microgreens that, that you grow and, and, and do, and it looks very powdery. I've eaten those. I'm here to tell you that the taste is very minimal <laughs> and you can mix it into the food. And I have had the pickiest dogs not even notice it. So microgreens go with a whole food source. Right. See, to me, that's food though. And as long as I, because I, I use a a veggie mix that is freeze dried and it is that powdery, and um, I I just I add hydration to it and mix it in, yeah. and it's all food. Yep, it's all food. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Too. <laughs> good with that. Too. He's over here like calling it the. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, we're done with this podcast, mom. It is time for you to pet me. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> what is his name? Nucky. Nucky. Okay. So have you ever name? seen Boardwalk Empire? No. Okay. So Boardwalk Empire was based out of Atlantic City and it's a, a mobster movie okay. or TV show on HBO. Oh, okay. And, um, because he was so heavy jowled and googly eyed the it's steve buscemi with his big googly eyes Man. that's what i named him after Aww. and now the real um uh thompson 
is just this this heavy jowled guy and that's what he looks like he's just the biggest baby he has absolutely no clue that he's 75 pounds he's ridiculous yeah i can tell <laughs> that's gonna be hard on your lap <laughs> but worth it okay <laughs> So, and, and yes, if you decide to keep this in, that's perfectly fine. I keep my dogs muzzled because during podcast, we like to act up and Luna can be quite reactive sometimes. And so it's just safer and easier for everyone to be muzzled while I do, while I'm working or when I'm on a consultation. And then I, I go back to my daily life and, and everybody is unmuzzled. So. No, yes. it's totally fine with me. I, you know, there, there's an uh, appropriate way to do it and a an not appropriate way to do it. Yes. And very obviously, he's very comfortable in it. And that's, that's great. I'm a big muzzle supporter. So yeah, I think even it's better to have it and never need it than to need it and not have it. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much for all of the wonderful information and the tips. And um, I, I hope that no one ever needs your services. But the reality is that's the world we live in. And we... I would absolutely I mean, love, and, and I truly mean this, I would absolutely, and that's the reason why I did my, my unity, or not my unity, but my, my puppy programs and my breeder program is because I wanted to get to the source. I, I wanted to start them at the very beginning. And then of course, I, I truly, I'm just, I'm obsessive about my hospice dogs that they're, they're everything to me. And that's why I wanted to go into the new year with just my unity programs, whether it be cancer or CKD or neurological. Um, you know, my family's, they're, they're everything to me. And, and I wanna make sure that they have that support system. And many of them become very lifelong friends of mine. You know, um, I just had one that, that we did lose him to his hemangiosarcoma and she goes out and she adopts two more dogs and she's enrolling them in, in my program. And so, you know, they, they've been adopted. They're older. Here we go again. So at least now that we know better and she knows better, now she's going to get finer tips on the, on a non-cancer dog. And there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and but it, it is. It's just the world we live in that you know our dog, we and our dogs, um, for the most part, live in this really chronic, like inflammatory state, and it's just not, <laughs> not, not, um, not ending up very well for many of them and that's why we're Great. seeing so many of these things on the rise and um so i appreciate so much what you're doing especially that like emotional component it's uh you know being more spiritual myself like mm-hmm. having become more spiritual in the past few years like i understand the toll that takes on you to give so much of your energy and capture so much of their pain. It's hot. <laughs> Look at that baby. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a very special thing that you do. And I don't want you to think that it goes unnoticed. I mean, I'm sure you don't, but it doesn't go unnoticed because it is a very special thing that you do. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. All of your links will also be in the show notes, but just to say it out loud, where can people find you? You can find me on my website, um, Dulcie's Legacy, and it's www.dulcieslegacy.com. Um, you can find Ellie's shop where I do bone broths and microgreens. Everything is done in-house. I'm too much of a control freak to allow anybody else to do it. <laughs> Our microgreens I have put together and everything is, is, is super focused on being anti-cancer. Um, our, our cancer numbers are just absolutely ridiculous. And so, you know, when I educate you guys, I want, I educate you either on the basis of being proactive or reactive, depending on, on which category that you're in. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm awful on Instagram, but it's Dulcie's legacy. Um, I, I get to be very wordy and Instagram doesn't allow me to post everything I want to say. <laughs> no, it doesn't. 
And then of course, Dulcie's Legacy on, on Facebook. Um, I'm also on TikTok, not awesome on there either. <laughs> So I, I've just got a little too many, you know, sticks in the fire for me to be able to handle all of IG and, and TikTok. So I oh, stay within sure. my realm of, of what I'm good with. Gotcha. Well, thank you again, Bronwyn. And guys, please do check her out. Um, even if you don't have a dog that you feel like you need guidance with right now, um, just start following her because all of the tips she posts are incredible. You will not regret it. So again, thank you so much, Bronwyn. Thank you so much for having me.